Welcome back to Joy News Prime. And we're returning to our first story where the Ghana Health Service, for the first time, has provided data backing its claim that Ghana's COVID-19 cases have peaked. The claim first made by the Ghana Health Service on Tuesday has been challenged by some public health experts, including Dr. Michael Owusu of the KCCR, who believe the data available is deficient. Dr. Michael Owusu, who is a virologist at the KCCR, uh, and also a lecturer at the KNUSC has joined us now. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Michael Usu. So let's look at what the Ghana Health Service has been saying today. On Tuesday, when we spoke, you indicated that the data available wasn't sufficient and that you were working uh, some models. Now, the Ghana Health Service has shared this graph, which, if you look at it, indicates that Ghana had the most cases on April 25, that's about 250, 270 cases. And since then, it's been on the decline, or the addition each day has been on the decline. What do you make of this graph and the data shared by the Ghana Health Service? Yeah, um, uh, good evening, Israel. So I have looked at the graph shared, and the first question I ask myself is that, uh, what are, where are the data points coming from? It is very possible that 70% of the data points could be coming from Accra. It is likely about 30% could come from Ashanti region, and the rest could come from, from the other part of Ghana. So the curve that, first right. of all, you see the curve is more speaking to Accra, highly possible, not, not the whole Ghana. That is one of the things I observe. The second point is that, which are the cases you get on hand, and then a curve which is based on a predicted value. And the predicted value is based on a model. You cannot just draw. You have to use a model to predict where you are and where you are likely to be. So the fact that we have done 138,000 tests, and which most of these tests, most 70% are in Accra and the rest in Ashanti, it's quite difficult to say that based on this, uh, we, have, uh, we have reached our peak and, and uh, maybe the curve is almost flat. It's very difficult to understand. Uh, ideally, if you want to use the observed values, uh, you should be able to get a representation of these values across the different parts of Ghana. And then you should use these values to now uh, cre uh, create a model and use your model to determine where you are, where you are likely to be, and see whether your observed values will follow the model. Then you can confidently say that indeed uh, you are you are at a peak point or you are you are you are going down the peak. It is possible in the next one or two weeks you could have doubled the number of 270 coming up every single day. So uh, I think that using the observed values is is difficult to understand. Uh, this is this is where I, I think we need to do more uh, to help us know where we are. And I think that using a model and using real time data or incident cases will be a better prediction of of, of what we are likely to be rather than. Uh, the, uh, using the previous data points to, to tell, especially when we have done limited testing only, which applies mostly to Greater Accra and the Ashanti region. All right. So as far as you're concerned, you're not convinced by the arguments being made by the Ghana Health Service. But how far are you in uh, coming up with your own models? You indicated that you are looking at some models yourself. Well, it's not like I'm not convinced, but I think that a lot more has to be done. And I, I think the statement was a statement of caution that if we don't take precaution measures very well, we are likely to uh, hit a point where we cannot decline it more. So I think it's, it's, not, it's not more meant for a peak. We've got a peak as an epidemic peaks, a lot goes into it than just using the observed values. I, I'm not the one doing the model, but I'm aware that the Ghana Academy of Art and Sciences are working with the Ghana Health Service to obtain real-time data, which will be matched to the date of sample collection, where they can have new incident cases, and then they plot these observed values and project this on a model. There are two models. We have the growth curve model, and then we have the cell model. The cell model makes use of the susceptible, exposed, infected, and recovery uh, uh, people. Then they can use the model to predict and tell us where our next peak will be, or whether we have already crossed the peak. Because in statistics, you use a limited data right. to, to predict what will happen to the general population. And because we, we cannot test 70% of the population now, you can use a few sample size, which could be representation, which should, should be representation of the entire region. Then when you put this on your model, you can now predict and project where you are. 
and follow through the daily cases to see how this will be. Even in the daily cases, you want to obtain the incident cases on a day-by-day -day basis. Then you can understand exactly what is happening. So I think that uh, we need to uh, be more cautious and take all the precautionary measures very well. But then uh, let's work. Let's wait for the Ghana right. Academy of Arts and Sciences. Uh, well, while, while they are working on this too, to augment uh, the data I and mean, what what statement has been made. I believe when they come up with their model, they will display this on the web for all of us to see and follow through. It's possible in the next two weeks you could have twice the number of maybe 270. And if you have twice the number, it tells you that a lot a lot is going on behind the scene. So I think that we need to be more cautious uh, with the statement. All right, thank you very much, uh, your Dr. Michael Owusu. He is a virologist with the KCCR and also a lecturer at the KNUS. You're watching Join News Prime Watch.